pretty cool shirt, ain't it? You got Scar, the hyenas. Hyena! Shit, we being prepared around here. So, welcome to the vlog, because everyone's been telling me that I need to make videos about sports, and since I'm a man of the people, here we go. So, every week I'm going to have this new thing. I'm going to call it Done or Done Right, and I'm going to let you know the fans in the fantasy world who's going to be done and ain't going to produce and who's done right and these going to be the sleepers on week to week basis that's going to help you win your league so since the league hadn't actually started yet but a lot of people are doing drafts this weekend i'm going to let you know a lot of the sleepers that i think that are going to be going later in the draft that i think will probably have week to week value for you and not just ride your overall bench or just fill, you know, uh, bye week spots. And then I'm going to let you know that like five people that I think you're going to have to spend too high of a draft pick for to get. Or I think are going to be bust in general. Um, that uh, I don't think are going to fit your team correctly. And I, I just think that you can get more value from other things other places. Three people that I think that are hella good targets in this draft because they're going to be going stupid late for some reason. And I think you can still get hella value from them. Number one, I think it's Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake, Miami Dolphins running back. I think personally, I don't understand why the lead back in a, and any NFL team is getting targeted so stupid late. Like, he's going around, like, 8 through 10. I get the fact that he had, like, that ankle problem. And he's got, like, a walk-in boot and stuff like that. But it's a 16-game season. Um, he may not be, like, out the gate fantastic for you, like, weeks 1 through 3. But towards, like, the end of the season, uh, especially since they're, like, trying to, like, mold Josh Rosen and stuff like that, uh, I think that having a legitimate running game is the only way you can do those types of things with young quarterbacks. So I think they're going to be relying a lot on screen passes and a running game out of Kenyon Drake to help Josh Rosen out a lot. And I think that you can benefit from those types of things in an 8 through 10 spot. So next is Marquez Valdez Scantling. Marquez Valdez Scantling, Green Bay Packers wide receiver. Got that rap name. But uh, he's the number two wide receiver over there in Green Bay. And with Devontae Adams taking the number one coverages, um, I wholeheartedly think that Marquez is going to be like the Juju Smith-Schuster of this season. And it should get stupid views. I Like Aaron Rodgers is going to be Aaron Rodgers of old. And Marquez should be reaping a lot of the benefits from that. So since he's been falling to like the 10th round in most drafts, I think he'll like start in your lineup at least as a flex, if not a wide receiver too, depending on how your like league is set up. But he, he should be like stupid good for you every single week. And last is Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson, Houston Texans, running back. So, I know Duke Johnson has gotten, like, a lot of benefit now because Lamar Miller's hurt. Um, but people are still, for some reason, not drafting him stupid early. Uh, he is going to be the workhorse. And I thought he was going to be the workhorse even, like, in the passing game um, as, like, probably a for real number two wide receiver in Houston because Deshaun Watson needs to get the ball out. But now that he's, like, the workhorse of the running back, too, he will probably get knocking on RB1 value in Houston, if not like legitimate RB2 value. I think he's going to get a lot of looks week to week. And in my draft, I got him in like the ninth round, 10th round. He'll probably be moving up now with the Lamar Miller injury. But I still think that he's like a legitimate six through eight that you can get. And it'll bolster your support around your like creme de la creme of your team and then the ones that are like done you, you're gonna be drafting these people too high everyone who's drafting these players are drafting them entirely too high so i say just avoid them in general and just focus on the consistency and then have like support later in your draft so number one patrick mahomes 
Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs, quarterback. He's gone in the second round. It's too early. Gone too damn early. Second round, he should not be drafted. No quarterback should be drafted below, above like the sixth round, in my personal opinion. Um, uh, there's a stat that I have made up uh, called points above replacement. Um, cause like war exists in baseball wins above replacement. So I'm calling this points above replacement and with the quarterback position in specifics, their points above replacement is the lowest in the league, uh, in difference between the number one spot to the 20th spot. Um, whereas, um, it's on average, probably close. I mean, it all depends on how you like your league is set up, but in my league, um, where you get four points for throwing a touchdown and a point every 25 yards you throw, um, it's eight point jump between one to 20th, eight points on week to week basis. Right. Um, whereas in running backs and wide receivers from one to 20th, it's almost a nine point drop. And when you consider you got to run two of those. You lose about 15 to 18 points a week drafting him too early than if you drafted uh, a wide receiver or running back in the exact same spot because it knocks everyone else down. Uh, so quarterbacks, I'm talking the Patrick Mahomes, I'm talking the, the Cam Newtons, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, don't draft any of them before like the sixth round because you'll just – Ruin the whole crux of your team. Next is Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham Jr. Cleveland Browns wide receiver. I don't think you should draft him at all unless he falls to like the third round for you. Like wholeheartedly. He won't, but if he does, because everyone listens to my videos, <laughs> um, then you can snatch him like the third round. But like before the third round, I Cleveland is too much of a question mark as far as everyone is concerned there outside of Baker Mayfield, because he's going to produce. Nick Chubb should produce as well. Um, but Kareem Hunt coming back towards the end of the season is going to ruin your playoff run. Um, but uh, with the wide receivers, like there's too many mouths to feed there. And, Odell Beckham Jr. could, by the end of the season, not even be the number one targeted player on his own team, which makes it rough for me to take him in the first or early second round, which is where he's going. So I would just stay away, stay away from the one-handed catch master. And lastly, and this is the one that I think I'm going to get the most heat for, is Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, New Orleans Saints running back. I don't think he's ready to be a feature back, like a down, three down back in his career. Uh, I know they drafted Latavius Murray to like take some of the workload off of him, but let's be honest, Latavius Murray hasn't been what he's expected to be his entire career, really. Um, and so I feel like towards the stretch of the career, uh, stretch of the season, that Alvin Kamara has got to go back to being a three down back. Oh, shit. Excuse me. I don't think Alvin Kamara is going to get you the production of a top five pick, which is where he's going. If you, if Alvin Kamara falls at the end of the first round and you can double up with him and like someone else, then fair. But I just think the other running backs that are going to be going in the beginning of the first round, the Christian McCaffrey's, the Zeke Elliott's, um, I just don't think that he's going to produce the same numbers that they are. And I am more than happy to get proven wrong i uh, i won't be but uh, um like i just that that's just me i would stay away if you're in the like one through three picks i would personally stay away from alvin kamara so that's the podcast that's the youtube video in its finality uh, I just would like to thank everyone who's out there going to be supporting me through all this. It's going to be a rocky road, but I just think that um, this is kind of what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so I got to start somewhere. So if uh, you like it, you know, I hope you do. God, I hope you do. If you like it, share it, promote it, like it. Um, if you don't like it, give me reasons why you don't like it. Don't just like, you know, watch it and be like, fuck, this guy's awful. Um, you know what I'm saying? Give me some critiques, feedbacks, and stuff like that.
but yeah, I'll be posting videos like once a week. So uh, thanks for watching.